Hello and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host Mitchell J. Rabin and I'm very glad you're joining us again today. Today we're going to have another very interesting show. We have invited back Dr. Gabriel Cousins. Dr. Cousins is world renowned for his writing, for his teaching, for his research into such things as diabetes. He's the author of a book called Spiritual Nutrition, another one called Conscious Eating. There are numerous that have been bestsellers really across the world. He's been embraced by so many uh, forward-thinking physicians, nutritionists, and others because of his groundbreaking work. Today, we're going to be focusing specifically on his work with diabetes because he has really basically orchestrated some breakthroughs in understanding its nature on, of course, a biochemical level, but beyond that. And we'll be looking at, you could say, the matrix of diabetes in our society and societies around the world. So, Gabriel, wonderful to have you back on the Nice Better to world. be here, Mitchell. So it's glad. always nice to be here. It's always good to have you. Yeah, it's good. been some years now, so yeah, yeah. much has happened. Yes. And uh, your research continues. The Tree of Life, this beautiful rejuvenation center out near Tucson, Patagonia, is just a... An incredible place. I had the joy of being your guest there. So we, years we've back. now gone all solar, oh, wow. including our water system. Really? So we're almost entirely off the grid now. Oh, wow. Now we have to transform the grid. Right, right, <laughs> but right, right. you got to start somewhere. You got to pull yourself out and then come back in. That's right. Good for you. That's yeah. great. So you're becoming a a true holistic center. Yeah, we have organic, veganic farming, so all our food is the highest quality, picked fresh that day. No place in the world can really offer that at, at the level we're talking about as a yeah. the nation center. Right. And, you know, we're off the grid, so it's a truly echo spiritual place. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, everything is, all the materials are organic, all the buildings are natural, so... Every the materials kind of that the buildings are made yeah, out of? straw bale. Mm -hmm. You yeah. even have a temple, a straw bale temple, I remember. That's correct. Yeah. So that's very unique. And we have a we dirt We had floor. Shabbat there. That's right. And you're singing at all, yeah. yeah. We have a, a dirt floor, which it looks like concrete, but it's layers of dirt. So we're connected in the temple to the earth, literally. Exactly. So it's very nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's almost like incubation. Like yeah. the ancient Greek system of getting in touch with your deeper self, yeah. alpha, theta, and dreams, visions. Well, that's right. so it's a very powerful healing place for people, but yeah. also people come just to rejuvenate. It's it's very unique to be in, surrounded by organic, vegan, eco spiritual lifestyle. Yes, and that's exactly. like a unique experience for people. Yeah. And for many, it's the first time they've ever had anything like that. So right. they're coming, you know, through the desert to arrive at an oasis. That's right. You know, it's right. beautiful. So love it. So love it. So there, talk about incubation. You've done a tremendous amount of research and testing of your thinking right. with your people there and beyond uh, on right. this whole subject that has become really an epidemic in the United States and worldwide Correct. of diabetes. Yeah. What are you doing? And it's foiled, of course, the medical community by and large, except for insulin uh, injections and things of that sort, which doesn't really solve the problem. It just allows it to uh, be homeostatic, if you will. What have you done to innovate in this space? Right. So the, the breakthrough we made is a different understanding of what diabetes is about, okay? It, it really is a result, it's something you earn, it's not something you catch, of living in the culture of death versus the culture of life. It's a lifestyle issue. When we look at the big picture, before 1940, diabetes was a rarity. With the in introduction of white flour, white sugar, junk food, Low fiber foods, uh, processed a, foods, processed food, and, and in a world that is, people aren't getting enough sleep, which is speeding up at this point, mm -hmm. and and clearly, if you just get five or six hours of sleep, it it actually will uh, greatly increase the rate of diabetes. Mm. 
because it disorders the immune system. Mm -hmm. You don't get exercise, that's a problem too. You watch too much TV, or these days, too much <laughs> cell phone or whatever. It actually, men who, who watch TV 19 hours a week have 150% more diabetes. Oh Just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. Yeah. So what we Extraordinary. did. Extraordinary. Yeah. It's a, so it's a whole cultural choice. Sure. Now, what's the real key? Yeah. The culture of life, we put the soul at the center. It's, it's at the core of your existence. Mm -hmm. The culture of death, you're separated from your soul. There's a kind of an emptiness that goes on because what is important is money, power, sex. Okay, run on the world in a certain way, mm -hmm. domination, and your soul aspect kind of gets pushed aside. Now, the result of that is, well, it's a obvious junk food, you know, a whole lifestyle that creates diabetes. And I'm going to say creates in a sense accelerates it. So what is the relationship, Gabriel, of the, let's say, the watching of television to that 19 hours a week extent? the use of this extended use of excessive use of the cell phone and diabetes. I mean, these are correlations, it's called in, but not causes. Right. It's all about that, if you get what I'm saying. The, the, the deepest thing is the emptiness. Mm. So if, you, if you're feeling okay. your soul, and you're filled with so then you have no need to try to feel it with, fill it with junk food, TV, you know, uh, <clears throat> You know all the cell phone technology and and so you don't need it's sort that. of being wrapped up in the cultural uh, paraphernalia. Right. Well, it's an effort to fill. It's the effort to fill. See, there's okay. never yeah. enough food for a hungry soul. Because what is the soul hungry for? The life. divine, for life. Okay. Right. And so. L'chaim, as we say in Chinese. Right. Right. <laughs> so what we're looking at is people try to fill that emptiness with food and junk food particularly and junk you know communication acquisition power That's all right. of the stuff that and, our and the sexual society. focus too which mm -hmm. is somewhere between sexuality and pornography that <laughs> people are trying desperately to fill that emptiness and guess what it doesn't work but okay. what you see and that's the important thing is 82% of the people with Di type 2 diabetes we're talking about, are overweight and 48% are obese. Mm. Because there's an effort trying to, to fill, fill the to emptiness. Fill. You know, the Buddhists talk about the phenomenon of the hungry ghost mm -hmm. that can never be filled. It's always famished and it's hungry for all of the kinds of things that you're talking I, about. I like that. That's it doesn't good. fill with, uh, with the depth of soul, but rather with all of the accoutrement of life, if you will. Right, you know? and, and the illusion that you can fill yourself from the outside. Exactly. So you just outlined what you could call the psychological, emotional, symbolic cultural, character. Cultural, world cultural. Cultural. cultural worldwide epidemic. Absolutely. Um, right. You could say body as metaphor, if you will, right. uh, which is very, very interesting. How about on the biochemical level? Okay. Um, and the whole, the whole conversation, the narrative has always been about blood sugar levels so, and about not pancreatic dysfunction. Okay, so once we get the big picture, then I'm gonna give you another definition that will help a lot, okay? And will help you understand, like we did a run of 120 people that we actually really documented closely, mm -hmm. besides our initial movie, 30 Days Raw, okay, where the di diabetics got better. Mm -hmm. 61% of type 2 diabetics were non-insulin dependent healed in three weeks. That's very high. You, we have to have the context. The context is the traditional medical belief system, I'm going to call it a belief system because it's no science Appropriately. It, is diabetes is incurable and a slow uh, but steady downhill to somewhere between four to eight or depending on the researcher, 11 to 19 years earlier death, okay? Incurable. So, so in three weeks, 61% of the people, they're on oral medications and so forth, okay? 24% of insulin-dependent 
That's just three weeks. I'm not talking about a year down the line, but uh -huh. okay, because we tracked it. Yeah. 24% of the insulin dependent are healed. Healed means a normal blood sugar, blood sugar less than 100, and no medications. Now that's very significant when you're told. And no insulin injections anymore. Nothing done. No medications. Period, period. Now, on top of that, I'm going to say by accident because we were, weren't focused on it, 21% of the type 1 diabetics also were healed in three weeks. Now that's a little more mind-blowing. Yeah. And we weren't really focusing on type 1 diabetics. 31% were off insulin but not less than 100 blood sugar. So okay. think about 21% of type 1, incurable, inhalable, off all their insulin with a blood sugar less than 100. And able to sustain that? Yeah, well, if they kept on the diet. So here's, yeah. here's the key. Okay. First, those are pretty dramatic results and basically tell you, guess what? Diabetes is healable. <laughs> yes. And so why does the system say it's inhealable? Because they don't understand enough about nutrition to know. Everybody will tell you you should eat less and have less sugar, by and large. Mm -hmm but they have a, uh, not exactly a winning diet to do that. <laughs> so in their world, experientially, it's not healable. So I want to honor that. Because if you don't really understand, then of course you can't heal it. Yeah. So prime principle, okay. The key... You need the right ingredients and tools. You need to know what and you're doing. thinking. Yeah, so I define diabetes as the chronic diabetes degenerative syndrome. Okay, now let's get the spectrum because it isn't just diabetes here. You have prediabetes. I also want you, if you would, to please distinguish the difference between type 1 and type 2. Okay, so type 1 is autoimmune and it happens in children and adults at this point. It, it, the re research shows that it has to do with taking cow's milk, Kids that drink cow's milk uh, within, particularly in the first three months. Instead of mother's milk? Yeah, are 11 to 13 times more likely in one study to get type 1 diabetes. That's a whole explanation, but it really has to do with antibodies that the body's making against the milk that cross react against the pancreas. Beta oh, cells the pancreas. interesting. Same principle. Okay. The research varies according to different countries, but somewhere between. 40% and 147% of kids that get vaccinated, that there's an increase of, uh, of diabetes, type 1, up to 147% in Finland and a certain group of people got vaccinated with just a Haemophilus um, B, uh, B, hepatitis B, I mean. So what am I saying? Same principle. The vaccines have lots of antigens. Mm -hmm. The body gets confused and cross-reacts, and from those antigen exposures, then it makes antibodies against the beta cells of the pancreas. Oh, oh So that's okay. why you have that happen. So that the presence of the vaccination for hepatitis B in that case, in right. that context, yeah. ended up acting as an accelerator for Yeah, but in all the, the vaccines. Prevalence we got the problem with all the vaccines. I just meant diabetes. to... For, Okay. And it, it's run, it's at least 40% increased. I'll just put it that way. In research in New Zealand, Finland, different places. You know, it's different mm -hmm. countries have done this research. Mm -hmm. Okay, we also know you can get it as an adult from a viral infection. Same principle. The virus, the body makes antibodies, but it cross-reacts against the base cells. Mm. So those are the three main autoimmune things. These are not genetic. Type 2 is genetic, okay, and oh. it's dietary related. So in type 2, uh, 45 to 85% of the people have a, a parent who had diabetes, and 70 to 90% of the people have a, a, a relative who had diabetes. So there's a genetic component. It's very small. It appears to be genetic. One. I'm going to comment on that later. Okay. Please go on. But it's dietarily related. But let's take a bigger picture, and then, we'll, and then you'll understand why we're able to heal it. Mm -hmm. So it's a chronic degenerative disease related to an epigenetic, a genetic mm. downgrade 
-hmm. in which people start having imbalances in insulin and leptin and adiponectin uh, controls, which is the key uh, to healing diabetes. Okay, so when they get disordered, then everything else starts to happen. I see. It's also You're so a little over my head, but okay. <laughs> I'm swimming so as let fast me, as I let can. Let me go back. <laughs> let me say, leptin and insulin are your main regulators of blood sugar. Okay. Yes. Leptin kind of regulates insulin singling. So if the insulin singling is off, the blood sugar issues get off. Oh. So what we're restoring is the genetic downgrade of your leptin and insulin signaling, and adiponectin is connected with fatty tissues, because we're going to a third piece of this. Okay. So you're talking about the signaling system for controlling blood sugar gets disordered. Oh, okay. That starts to make words, sense. In other words, when to uh, release a certain uh, insulin at first at all, and then how much? And insulin In resistance, there's all kinds plain of... Plain lingo. <laughs> yeah, and plain lingo, it's controlling the blood sugar, and these moderate it. Yes, That's exactly. the plain lingo. Moderate, we, modulate. We don't want to go yeah. too far behind that because then we get into biochemistry levels. Yes. There's, in my book, There's a Cure for Diabetes, I, I outline it pretty detailed. Okay. Yes. But it also is an imbalance in carbohydrate, protein, and fat metabolism. Mm. And it's also associated with what I call para-inflammatory. That means the body's inflamed. Mm -hmm. The inflammation is the driving force behind really all disease and the driving force behind diabetes as yes, well, which disorders everything. Yes. Okay. Right. Now, it what, causes chaos in an otherwise orderly system. Right. And so all signals are thrown off. That's right. Now, and leptin is a hormone that comes out of the fatty tissue. Okay. And mm -hmm. it's connected to the inflammation. And it's made worse by a diet high in white sugar, white flour, junk food, processed food, lack of exercise, refined lack of carbs, sleep, refined junk, all processed food. They drive it. Plus, yeah, pesticides, herbicides, radiation. I actually have EMFs, electromagnetic right. fields. Okay, now here's the thing. I have seven forms of diabetes: oh. type one, type two. Gestational diabetes, which is diabetes of pregnancy, uh -huh. electromagnetic diabetes, because we have people that that's their problem. They have to go and live away from the city. Yeah. Their blood sugars go back yeah. to normal. Oh, Radiation diabetes. 60% uh, of the kids. As in Fukushima radiation? 60% of the kids in Fukushima, oh. age 12 and less, have diabetes. 60% have type 2 diabetes. After Chernobyl, the rate of diabetes, type 1, increased 200%. In Bimimi, do you know what that is? That where they did the nuclear testing? Oh, yeah. Was that <coughs> a little island? Mm hmm I knew it as Bimini. But still. That's the right pronunciation. <laughs> the same place. That's the right pronunciation. Okay. Bimini is the right pronunciation. Okay. They have an uh, increase in type 2 diabetes and type 1. And so radiation really does have an effect. Oh, so okay, so we had that. We net, we said the electromagnetic yeah. radiation, um, and so all those are forms of setting it off. Now mm -hmm. mercury sets it can set it off, pesticides and herbicides can set it, but they're not like major. It's it's just general toxicity of the environment can also set it off. Okay, they all create this disordered. All these things mm -hmm. are acting on the genes. The genes downgrade because they don't. Yeah. They can't handle it. And yeah. The epigenetic program, which is the interface yes. between the genes and the environment, is where the downgrade yeah. happens. Yeah. So our work is upgrading the epigenetic program and decreasing the inflammation. Got that it. that's there, and that's it. why we get the results. Yes, I okay? see it. We do not focus on blood sugar only as to see how we're doing, but that's right. not the problem. That's downstream. That's if right. you hit, that's your point of leverage right there. Right. Between the genetic um, profile and the environmental so-called lifestyle. Right. And, and that's where you enter. And that's where mm -hmm. we focus. So when people are at peace and they're meditating and they're living a good lifestyle and all these other things like exercise, proper nutrition, and so forth. Now, I will get more specific, but I want to just get that's the main idea. Yeah. So our point is the 
is to reset, upgrade the epigenetic program, and that turns off the inflammation, turns off all these disorganized signaling systems, and they come back to normal. A lot of people come in with... Um, By the way, just for the sake of the audience, so yeah. you understand epigenetics, which is something that uh, uh, our dear friend, cellular biologist Bruce Lipton, helped to really pioneer and advance. It's the effect of lifestyle back toward the gene and the signaling system. So it's not just that we are the passive recipients of a genetic program, but that our lifestyle choices, values, sense of inner harmony or lack thereof, is thereby also affecting our genetic makeup. And the key is there actually is, when we say epigenetic, it's, it's not a theoretical thing, it's like a mm. protein sheath that interfaces mm. between the environment and your DNA. And th this yeah. protein thing controls your DNA response. Yes. And that's what, our goal is to upgrade that, which we can do in three weeks. That's what it's it remarkable. takes. Remarkable. So that's why we get results. Now, the deeper thing is, well, why do we get results in a deeper way? Yeah. Is we actually, sugar is a driving force. Carbohydrates is a driving force behind it because sugar is what stresses the system. Even the vegan well, approach. really certain kinds of sugars, because if the brain doesn't have sugar, it's like uh, sayonara. Well, not exactly. Okay, okay please. So I, I'll explain two things. Okay. Because you, you, you actually added the third. It's, the last thing is Alzheimer's diabetes. Oh. Okay, so what's going on, and uh, Alzheimer's diabetes will explain it to you, is the brain becomes insulin resistant. You can't get sugar into the brain. Oh. And... and, and the sugar feeds the memory structures. Okay, I won't get too detailed in that, like the hippocampal area. Mm -hmm. Ah, so when we have this, that's only one cause of Alzheimer's, okay? But that, if that's the cause, yeah. then we switch to ketones. So feeding people like three to five tablespoons of coconut oil gives you beta keto glutarate, which is a uh, butyrate, which which supplies ketones, and then the brain begins to regenerate. What is the relationship between ketone and sugar? Not. Not? So you don't oh. need sugar to make the brain work, you need ketones. That's the key wow. concept. Wow, how do you spell ketone? <laughs> K Where can I buy some? <laughs> K-E-T-O-N-E-S. Oh yeah. Coconut oil. Coconut oil goes right to the liver, it metabolizes the liver, it metabolizes in the liver, it makes uh, the ketones that are key for both heart and brain function. Really interesting. So this, you know, you said it at the beginning, and of course we here at A Better World know that uh, modern medicine <clears throat> is largely a religion, and uh, it's got a certain economic uh, kind of uh, Base donation system. <laughs> we'll say yes. Uh, so, you know, well, well put, of course. But what you just said just demythologizes an entire assumption that's been underlying for who knows how long that the brain operates on glucose. And you're basically yeah. saying if coconut saying oil is best, largely fat. I'm saying the best fuel for the brain is ketones. Secondarily is sugar. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not saying it. sugar isn't a fuel. It's a secondary. It's secondary. It's okay. top. But in our so society today. Yeah. Mainly, it's glucose that's driving because of our diets. Yes, exactly. And so if we had more of the ketone uh, input ingestion, then we would be more balanced in the possibility of, of this kind of uh, diabetes or Alzheimer's would thereby also decrease. Yeah, and you can, the, literally in four days, people's brains begin to work when you put them on coconut oil because their, their hippocampal areas begin to regenerate because they're getting enough energy. That's awesome. So it's kind of interesting. So Alzheimer's is double with diabetes, and I consider that one of the seven diabetes. That's so interesting. So we have these different primary causes. Exactly. So exactly. And remedies. And re yeah. Now, the key with the remedy is something... Unfortunately, we've only got one minute for the remedy. No, we we'll do part two. Okay, fine. <laughs> that we can do. Okay. okay. So the Stay key, tuned. however, is 
going back to the natural ways. So this is why I teach in Africa, Mexico, all over the world. What's the natural ways? In a sense, a low, moderately low complex carbohydrate diet, fat, and protein. That was the, I, I teach a vegan, let's say, uh, caveman diet. <laughs> because you don't need to eat meat to make this work. And meat actually increases the rate of diabetes 35 to 50 percent. So that doesn't really help us. Okay. Wow. So we got to go back to low carbon. Remember, Even caveman meat, which is like, you know, au naturel. Yeah. That? Well, yeah, but you can, you don't need to do that. Right. I want to That's another about, point. Yeah. Right. You don't need to do that. Right. But my point here is there is a natural diet that people have lived on for, you know, uh, literally hundreds of thousands of years. It does work. Yes. And it's a much more higher natural fat diet. But the first thing we do... But it's not the paleo diet. Well, the paleo diet is a meat-based diet. So this is a vegan paleo diet. Oh, okay. Diet. All right, fine. <laughs> Thanks for that I, clarification. Because, because when I say cut out grains, I, we cut out all grains. Oh, I see. Okay. All dairy, okay, all meat, because it raises dairy meat raise. So it is... Yeah. It is a vegan paleo diet, and we have lots of ways to work with that. Well, that's a good thing and for I, people to hear because the paleo diet is so popular and sort of right. almost mainstream. So this is moving it from that into the vegan. Yeah, because there's I a like that word vegan. Yeah, because there's a long-term thing. We'll talk about in the next section. The difference between is, is vast because okay. we know that people eat just that much meat actually have up to twenty percent higher mortality rates, okay, and that's cancer, uh, w which is, you know, 10 to 13 percent. We will pick up Cardiovascular, on right. So the key is, there is a cure for diabetes, and it's going back to the natural ways, which is a moderately low complex carbohydrate diet, and higher fat, and higher protein. Beautiful. We'll get into... And putting your soul back at the center of your core existence. Beautiful. Putting your soul okay. first, where yeah. it always belonged. Good, good, good. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriel. This is okay. beautiful information. This is beautiful. And then we'll go to part two. We'll get, we'll to, get to part two. Okay, great. This is Mitchell J. Rabin for A Better World. Thanks so much for joining us. We've been speaking with Dr. Gabriel Cousins. We'll be picking up on this conversation about the real nature of diabetes and uh, its place in our society and the way we can heal it, as he's been saying. So please get in touch with me at www abetterworld.tv and contact me at mjr at abetterworld.net. Love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you all next week.